As I've completed the task of building the flight computer for my rocket project, I'm now moving on to the most difficult and important part of rocketry, building a powerful rocket motor that can actually make the rocket airborne. If we look at the basics of how a rocket motor works, we'll find that the principle is quite simple. Fill a tube with something that burns quickly and generates hot gas. Add a small hole at one end to let the gas escape, and the resulting thrust will push the rocket in the opposite direction. It seems simple to build, but in reality it's far more challenging than it looks. If any of you viewers have ever built a rocket motor, please share your experience in the comments. It would be really helpful. In today's video, I'll show you how I planned the build, gathered all the necessary materials, and started working on my first high-power rocket motor. Hopefully, it won't turn into an explosive device like it did last time. The first step was to gather the building materials, which was easy because everything I needed was available at the hardware store. PVC pipe, clay adhesive, tape, and more. I chose a simple motor design where a seven inch PVC pipe would serve as the motor body. For the end cap, I used a standard PVC pipe cap. As for the nozzle, I found a pipe joiner that's normally used to connect two pipes. It fit perfectly on the motor body, so I decided to build the nozzle inside that joiner and attach it to the motor. First, I glued a washer inside the jointer. Luckily, the jointer had a small inner edge that helped hold the washer in place. The washer's inner diameter is around 0.5 inches, which is quite large for a small rocket motor. However, I thought it would be safer to have a larger throat diameter, as it reduces the chances of overpressure inside the motor. The downside is lower thrust, but I plan to compensate for that by using a more powerful fuel. After gluing the washer, I started adding clay adhesive to form the converging section. This part of the nozzle is important because it increases the gas velocity before the flow reaches the throat. After that, I started making the diverging section of the nozzle using adhesive clay. The diverging section is the end part of a rocket nozzle where the hot gases from the throat expand and accelerate to even higher velocities before exiting the nozzle. This section is typically wider and longer than the converging section. Although diverging sections are usually found in large, high-power motors, and not in small ones. Including this section is very important. It significantly improves the efficiency and performance of the motor. I built the entire nozzle using adhesive clay, but this material can't withstand the high temperatures of rocket exhaust gases and could easily deform during firing. To prevent that from happening, I applied a layer of normal clay mixed with cement powder over it. This protective layer helps shield the adhesive clay from heat damage. The protective layer has been applied. Now it's time to let it dry for a few hours. While it was drying, I started working on other parts of the motor. First, I cut the motor body. I'm using a 34.90 millimeter CPVC pipe, cut to a length of seven inches. I also added a layer of clay inside the end cap to make it stronger and more durable. These were some simple tasks, quick and easy to complete. But when it comes to preparing fuel for the motor, that's where things get really tough. It's honestly the hardest part a rocket builder has to face and often takes multiple attempts to get right. I wasn't fully prepared when I began working on the fuel, so I ended up going with the most overrated rocket fuel out there, rocket candy. I still don't understand why it's so popular. 
It's hard to cast, can't be stored for long, and definitely not as reliable as something like black powder. Every time I've tried using rocket candy as fuel, it's led to problems. And somehow, I still chose it for this motor build. That turned out to be a huge mistake, and you'll understand exactly why later in this video. At first, I decided to use the most common mixture for rocket candy, 65% potassium nitrate and 35% sugar. The potassium nitrate I had was in crystal form. I thought about grinding it, but I was hoping it would melt easily during cooking. So I left it as it was. I measured both ingredients on a kitchen scale and mixed them together to make a 100 gram batch. Then started cooking. I gently stirred the mixture on low heat to avoid overheating. But after cooking for a while, I noticed something strange. All the sugar had melted, but the large pieces of potassium nitrate didn't dissolve. This was probably because I didn't grind it and left it in large chunks. The first batch of fuel turned into a dirty, brown mess, and I had no choice but to throw it away. What a waste of time and materials. For the second batch, I went with 70% potassium nitrate and 30% sugar. But before making the mix, I cut a 2.33 inch piece of PVC pipe to use as a mold for fuel grains. This motor would be a three grain motor. I also decided to add a thermal liner to protect the motor body from direct heat. A thermal liner is a protective layer that sits between the fuel and the motor casing. First, I tried using paper and glue, but it didn't work as expected. So I replaced it with aluminum foil. A thin layer of foil would sit between the mold and the hot fuel. The idea was that the foil would stick to the fuel and make it easier to fit the liner inside the motor body. At least that's what I hoped would happen. Let's see how that goes. I measured the ingredients on the scale and prepared a 200 gram batch of fuel. With the grain mold ready, I started cooking again. This time, I cooked the fuel carefully and it turned out perfect. Once it reached a thick, syrupy consistency, I began casting. I poured the hot fuel into the grain mold and using a makeshift coring rod and some cardboard, I created a long core through the center of the grain. Unfortunately, I couldn't record this part because I was struggling to handle the hot fuel safely. After forming the core, I let it cool for a while. But when I tried to remove the coring rod, I discovered that it was stuck inside the core. I tried so hard, but the coring rod just didn't want to come out of its warm and comfortable place. I kept trying and eventually, the grain popped out of the mold, but the rod was still stuck inside. However, my idea of using the foil liner seemed like it was working. The grain was nicely covered in foil, looking shiny and well-formed, but it didn't fit properly inside the motor body. The grain slid in, but the foil started tearing. And as I kept struggling to remove the coring rod, the fuel grain began getting sticky. That's the thing about rocket candy. It starts softening again just a few minutes after casting. Since the rod didn't come out, I decided to take a few pictures for the thumbnail 
and set the grain on fire to see how the 70-30 mix would perform. After combustion, I noticed a lot of white residue at the burn site. That was unburnt potassium nitrate. Maybe the fuel had too much sugar for the nitrate to react with, or maybe the ingredients just weren't mixed properly during cooking. The only conclusion I reached from that burn test was that the fuel I made was basically trash, and since I had more of it left in the pan, I set that on fire too. That fire show was fun, and honestly, my rocket nozzle is looking really good. Both the converging and diverging sections are in good shape, but I did discover a few cracks in the upper layer of the nozzle. I'm not sure if those cracks are going to be a problem, but I'll find out when I test the motor. Right now, I have everything ready for the rocket, except the fuel. And if I go back to using black powder, there's a real chance the motor could turn into an explosive device again. If you've made it this far, Thank you so much, my friend, for watching. I have a small request. Just leave a rocket emoji in the comments. It's a small gesture, but it means a lot and really helps. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the testing and launch of this rocket motor.